that I see him in. Absolutely. When we saw him back September, he was in good condition, right? not this good condition. Do notice that he is bone dry talking about Carlos Takami. Yes. He brings in 20 more pounds than his opponent here. Actually, both fighters bone dry. And in heavyweight matches, especially heavyweight matches, that could be a real detriment because you've got to get ready to throw because I have a feeling that Maldonado is not going to pull a Muhammad Ali and start running around <laughs> this ring and jab it. You know, I mentioned Maldonado has 71 rounds of experience. Takam has 219 rounds of experience, 20 pounds on his opponent. You have to believe the odds favor Carlos Takam. And remember what I said about heavyweight Bang. matches. Both guys are coming in with 100% tanks filled with gas. Mm -hmm. Both guys 39 years of age, and that's experience. That's how you have to look at that. The one thing that I thought that Takam had to work on was his hook. Okay. Jerry Cooney and I were watching his hook after the last fight, and Jerry said, you know what? He's, he needs work on that hook. He doesn't get full shot. leverage on it. Ooh. Nice body shot by Takam. Gosh. Another one. Slapping of leather against human flesh will never get old. <laughs> mm. Hard uppercuts there by Takam. Nice right. Man, oh man, already the welts appearing. Maldonado's gonna have to do something. He cannot stand here with a man that has 20 plus pounds on him and absorb that type of punishment to the body. Look, when you got 25 knockouts, you gotta turn your hands loose. You can't stand in front of Takam hoping he's gonna punch himself out. That's not gonna happen. And with all due respect, it begs the question, who did he knock out? When you give a, a guy like Carlos Takam an opportunity to just open up on you. Well, yeah, he can punch himself out, but the chances are he won't. Look at those right hands. I call them rib roasters. Uppercut with the left hand. There was a left coming off the counter there by Maldonado. It's the first thing I've seen out of him so far. Now we're right. Maldonado, though, has zero mobility, trying to work his way out. Nothing. Maldonado came back with a sharp right hand to the cheek, which Kind of stopped Takam in his tracks for a moment. I like what Takam does there. There's the 219 rounds. He dips the shoulder. Dips the shoulder and pushes when he has his opponent against the ropes. Just that, that veteran instinct. And speaking of veteran, veteran referee, Pat Sullivan. Refereeing now for about 20 years. Takam just taking target practice here. Maldonado's walking away, turned his back on his like, opponent. Like, what was You mentioned that? Roberto Duran earlier on in the night. Is Maldonado hurt? Maldonado doesn't want to fight. No, he doesn't. You know what? The referee's looking. If he just quits right there, I hold his purse if I'm the commissioner. Fair enough. A couple of left hands. Blow there. One went low to the body. You're right about it. Maldonado doesn't want to fight. Really? No, he... If anything, he's hoping that Takam punches himself out as we end round number one. If the fighter turns his back, it's just incumbent on the referee now. You know, you want to walk away from the fighter, but you don't turn your back. True. Well, Let's see what happens, because I think Carlos Takam feels he can win this on a knockout this absolutely. round. And he do. is putting... He's putting some bad intentions on those shots. And I like what I see here from Takam, and we've talked about the experience here. There, there's no frenzy here. There is still the game plan, still the work to be put in in the second round of 10. Does Maldonado go 10? It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> Good jab there by Takam. Oh, right hand follows right through. Takam pushing forward. Maldonado is feeling them. You watch him take backward steps when he gets hit yes. with a hard shot. Lunges in with a right hand. Yeah, but even when Maldonado tries to get off, get something off, there's nothing behind it. Even though Maldonado is 28-3, he is in against a world-class yep. fighter tonight. A top contender without a doubt.
I mean, and he's learning what it's all about. The only hope I could see, and it was just ev evident right there, is Takam's left hand is a little low, and he's turning his shoulder. Is there a right hook from Maldonado that could shock the world here tonight? Or at least shock Huntington? <laughs> and, and everybody watching on Fight.tv, you know, as you're watching this, call friends, let them know. You're watching the co-feature, Carlos Takam, heavyweight contender. We still got one of the top 140 pounders Whoops. in the world, Cletus Selden, after this. Oh, yeah. And I think he is the hardest single shot hitter in the 140 pound division. But back to this one, Maldonado is throwing some shots now. Not Ooh, much hard on those right shots. hand from inside. Oh, the hook that you talked about from Takam. Two to the body, two to the head. But I'm telling you, he doesn't have the greatest hook in the heavyweight division. And I think with all that beef, he can have a better mm. hook. Well, you think hook, you think Joe Frazier, huh? You know, Frazier, there's, there's just so many guys. I mean, Anthony Joshua, nothing wrong with his There's hook. a hook from Maldonado. Andy Ruiz sure. had a great hook the night that he beat Anthony Joshua last year. Carlos Takam has it all, and if he just puts a little bit more together on the hook and on that jab, oh, wildly missing. See, he's trying to end the fight right sure. now. 20 seconds to go. Why not? Maldonado trying to get off. It just seems to be off balance when he throws these punches. As you see, Takam just leaning. Again, Takam has 20 plus pounds post weigh in on him. Couple of uppercuts. Those uppercuts are brutal. And a round number Ooh. two. Oh. Maldonado's taking some stiff uppercuts to the face, the nose. They are hard shots. And here we go again. Round number three. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds. Better watch out for a Look headbutt. at those shots. You can feel them. Get out of the way by Takam as Takam continues to stalk, throwing out that jab and setting up that right hand. Ooh, hard right hook. Watch when Maldonado walks in behind the jab. He more or less pushes it, but when mm -hmm. he gets hit with the jab, again, I'm going to go back to Mike there it Tyson. Is. Head. Headbutt? Yep. Yep. The lights are in our eyes, kid. Is there a cut? I don't see a cut, but the the fight style was begging for this to happen. We got a timeout here, and now we resume. Time in. Round number three, one minute gone. Round now, number three. Now, what, what can this do to the psyche of Takam and the psyche of Maldonado? Something like that, is that enough to turn the tide? No, cut. not at all. Because Takam is not badly cut. Right. I don't see any cut. Maybe there's going to be a, a swelling there. They should work on, on it in the corner, even if they don't see a swelling. Right. When the head's bang, sometimes it takes a little while before that swelling pops up. I remember, we were just talking about a guy getting nailed and then blowing his nose and his exactly. eye blows up. Because around the eyes, you've got nasal passages. Mm -hmm. And if those nasal patches just get injured and the fluid, the edema, rushes to that area and yep. you blow it. It just fills the area That's up it. immediately. Nowhere else for it to go, huh? The push of the shoulder and then some inside work and then an uppercut by Carlos Takam. And those uppercuts are just Ooh, brutal. That might have been an elbow. Yeah, he, they push off with their elbow a lot. Double. Nice shot to the body, an uppercut there. I think Takam looks so much better tonight than we saw him back in September. What he needs also was work. Okay, good point. The close quarters fighting, though, that, that's the only thing that Maldonado has going for him. If Maldonado was on the perimeter, I don't think we'd be even watching round three of this fight. Look at the defense of Takam. Oh. Takam using everything from cross-arm defenses to Almost the shoulder roll, keeping yes. his hands up, a la Kenny Norton, the way he used to do. Bang, bang, bang. And Hard Maldonado, right hand. his hands are low, and he just he's, he's, he's content to absorb the punishment. Dare I say, does Takam not hit hard? Is that the reason Maldonado's still here? I can't imagine, and they're close to us. I don't want him to hear me say that. <laughs> Honestly, 37 wins, 28 by KO. Maldonado's still in this thing. 
in Maldonado's three losses, he has been stopped one time, and that was by contender Mike the Bounty Hunter. It's a great name. Well, that was actually his dad, Mike Hunter Sr. He called himself the Bounty No swelling whatsoever. She did have a black eye, okay. but there was no closing of the eye because I worked on it with the ends. Huh. If I could do it with a little girl like that, these professional corner men yes. who only have one minute. That's right. The trick with the end swill is to lean heavy on it. It is, it is not. It doesn't feel good. It no. hurts. And you're moving the fluid away from the, from the bone and yes. from the area. Exactly. You pull it back Ooh. towards the ear. A body shot there by Carlos Takam, who continues to do what he's been doing for three and a half, four rounds here, coming forward like a bull. Big uppercut there. Maldonado, though, I have to say, from the first round to now, at least he's game. At least he's here. He is very game because in the first round we thought that he was he wanted to go home. And I truly, if I was a commission member, if I was back in my old seat and he had quit, withhold the it's purse. Like, he doesn't speak much English. I would have said to him, no fuerte, no dinero. Well, right now, Carlos Takam may be making Fabio Maldonado earn his money. He's hurt. Takam chopping away, floundering. Hey. Veteran referee Pat oh Sutherland boy, breaks Maldonado him up. Maldonado is not on, he's on jelly legs here. And watch Pat Sullivan. Bang, bang. Watch Pat Sullivan's face. He's watching everything about Maldonado. Nice uppercut on the inside, going to the body, trying to get those hands down. At some point, something's coming over the top here from Carlos Takam. Maldonado has to get out of there. Right now, this is work for Carlos Takam. He's just working, working, getting some rounds and getting some time in. He's nice not start. fighting at 100%. If he was, I think Maldonado would be out of here. I think he really wants the work. But you risk taking a shot, headbutt, elbow, whatever. Anything. If, if I'm in his corner, at the end of this round, I say to Carlos Takam, get him out of there. Yep, I want you to this fight. empty it, empty it. The way Takam comes. Mm, straight right hand. I get visions of Evander Holyfield in the twilight of his career when I see Takam. Well, when you talk about Evander Holyfield at any point in his career, you're talking about one of the greats of oh, all sure. time. <laughs> Takam almost smiling at the fact that he knows that Maldonado now knows that Maldonado cannot connect. Mm -hmm. Maldonado trying his hardest right here, but really taking a beat down. I can't see Maldonado going much longer. No, he is a fighting, absolutely just fighting on heart alone. You know, there, there is still something to, to watch here. Of course, we see that Carlos Takam should be ahead and is dominating, but we, we talk about the heart of a fighter, and look, we see Maldonado still coming forward. Maldonado could easily get on his bicycle and, and you know, ride away, so to speak, but he still continues to come forward, and that in and of itself has to get some type of acknowledgement. It does. I mean, I got the utmost respect for what I'm seeing from Maldonado. The first round, had he quit? Different conversation. I, I really, right, totally different uh, conversation. <laughs> but speaking of combination, that go. was a combination by Takam. You know, I'm wondering if in his mind, Takam is saying, you know what, this guy's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick my shots now, Take step back, not wait, get hurt. wait for that big right hand, wait for that. Again, he doesn't have that one punch that's well, evident. That's evident, yeah. He's got a nice uppercut, throws it nice to the body, nice hook there. Mm. Obviously been working on that hook because he didn't have that hook back in September. Well, it's a great testament to his dedication to the sport at 39 years old and 219 rounds of experience before this fight to still work on something, to still try uh -huh. to be better. 
heavyweight division outside of Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. It's Deontay Wilder still there. It's Andy Ruiz. Got to prove to us he's more oh, than a, a lot of names. Yeah. More than he's a talented fat guy. <laughs> nah, he, he he did it himself. Joseph Parker. The young guys coming up. The heavy hitters. F.A. Jagba. Daniel Dubois. Joe Joyce. Tony Yoka. Yeah, there's just so much going on, and honestly, it just says how great boxing is and where we are in this great sport. And you, you can't forget guys like Dylan White and guys like Luis Ortiz. And, and I did. I actually forgot. Yeah. That was a perfect. Dillian White might be as good as anybody out there. And just being ducked, ducked, and ducked. Yeah. For it good is reason. time. <laughs> 2020, he's got to get his title shot. And a man who hangs around, just keeps coming back with win after win is Derek Chisora. Hey, I'd love a 45-year-old guy, 46 even, Amir Mansoor, to get one more shot just because of his big heart. Final seconds, round number five. Yeah, it really was. It's been a buffet of brutality, so to speak, here. Oh, and I'm loving it. A buffet Ooh. of brutality. I'm going to steal that. It's all line. yours. <laughs> I owe you everything for tonight, my friend. <laughs> Back to the action. Pounding away is Carlos to come. Round number six, scheduled for 10. If you were wagering on this one, <laughs> were you going to wager that Maldonado was not going to make it through 10 rounds? I would have bet just about anything that he wouldn't, but we're only in the sixth. How much can he take? I don't have him winning a round. I have him losing two of the rounds, 10-8, without him even being down. He is trying. He's trying with the left hook, but there's nothing on that left hook right nothing now. Nothing at all, because he doesn't have the room to throw it. There's not enough torque. There's no power behind it, just the, from the legs alone. These are just padding, plotting shots but they're not on the part of Carlos Vacam. He is basically giving Maldonado a leather shampoo. There you go. I do like what I've seen from the uppercut out of Takam. It's one of my favorite punches in yes. boxing because it's so effective. Not many guys throw it not that way. Not at well. all. Ooh, hard left There's hand a there. nice hook. I'm telling you, he didn't have that hook in September. There's that uppercut you're talking about. Again, the left uppercut. Again, the left uppercut. And push. again. Look at it. It's uppercut and push. Uppercut and push. Just give me a little room here. Oh, oh here Maldonado comes, Maldonado. comes Maldonado. back with three, four shots. That's the first time he's done that. He is willing to Whoop. slug it out. Uh, Maldonado is just, when he dips his head like that, Maldonado, he's just wide open little for low. Takam's heavy hands. Right on the belt line. They weren't dreadfully low. They're on the belt line. Referee Pat Sullivan lets Takam get away oh. with it. Oh, look at those rib roasters. Honestly, Maldonado needs to fire. At least appear busy here when you're so close. The hands just aren't moving from Maldonado. Not at all. His earlobes are taking a beating. I got to tell you, tomorrow he's not going to be able to touch his earlobes. Oh. Oh, look at that left hook, a double hook to the side. You could hear it yeah. from our star boxing ringside position. Now, all night long, I've been mentioning classic fighters. When I hear that thud, I think of, remember Michael Dokes? Oh, and Lord. he would just, ha, ha. And that's what you would hear as just a pounding of flesh. I'll tell you something about Michael Dokes. Michael Dokes, who fought when I was commissioner, he fought in New York a lot. During training, didn't believe in taking showers, so he kind of just wiped himself down okay. with alcohol. He was not a pleasant guy to be around. <laughs> <laughs> Come fight time. Got it. Two. What do we got? 51, 60 to 51. It's a runaway for Carlos Sacam. And I would think that Fabio Maldonado needs a knockout. Yes, I would agree. Fabio told me at the weigh-in yesterday, I said, who's your favorite fighter? You got any? Yeah. 
He said, no, no Inglés, but I know Favorito, Joe Frazier. Okay. Well, he's going to certainly have to start to swing some hooks here. There you, you know, go. There's a left hook. I noticed that the New York State Athletic Commission doctors are getting up between rounds. Yes. And if this does go to a bell in the sixth, in the seventh round here, we we'll see check. if we can check into the Maldonado corner because I think we're going to see the New York State Athletic Commission doctors. They can recommend that this fight right. be stopped. And, of course, Maldonado will not be happy about well, it. Well, it's the safety of the fighter. Of course. I mean, a lot of shots to the head, a lot of shots to the body. You start to worry about internal bleeding, and you start to worry about some other things when getting hit in the head and the body so often. See, those shots that Maldonado are landing, most of them are not clean shots. No. The left hand has nothing on it. There you see him off balance with his right foot yeah. forward. Pushing. And again, it's the we, we talked about it earlier. We forget about it. Takam came in at 256. Maldonado came in at 237. So that's even more impressive that Maldonado's still there. Oh, maybe he won't be for long, though. Minute 15 remaining in round number seven. How Maldonado is taking oh, all these shots is just beyond us. It's a great shot over the glistening, brolic back of Carlos Takam. Just been laying waste to Fabio Maldonado. Patrick Sullivan just glanced over his shoulder. I think he might have been looking at the commission. It is not going to surprise me if they stop this fight. Talk to me about Maldonado's bravado, his hubris. Come on, come on, come on. I mean, who are you fooling? First round, I was not happy with him because we thought he was going to pack it in. On two occasions, he turned, basically turned his back on Carlos Takam. Since then, he has been hanging on the inside, getting beaten up, and he won't quit. What about the, the psyche of Takam? Does Takam start to question himself? Does he, whoa, 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 maybe no. not. <laughs> no, because you can't knock everybody out with one shot. Here we go. Backed into the corner. Maldonado with an underhook trying to get out of there. Spins around, and now it's Takam in the corner. Not for long. <laughs> You know, you can question yourself if the guy was Ooh. 3 and 25. He's 25 and 3. And I believe he also said something. You know, referees a lot of times will go over to a corner and say to a guy, you've got to show me something. Sure. And I think that says it all. Bang, bang, left, right. Solid shots right from the get-go. Hooks to the body, right hand to the body. Left hook from Maldonado that puts some sweat off of Takam's head, but again, I just don't think anything Maldonado lands is going to have any effect whatsoever. Oh, careful there. But watch as they're together banging. Watch the referee and experienced rep Pat Sullivan. He's going to be looking at both fighters, but mainly yeah. he is looking at Fabio Maldonado. Maldonado's hands are a little bit busier here. They haven't been busy at all in no. this fight. I mean, I would love to see a, a CompuBox punch stat statistic of how many thrown to landed to common Maldonado have. I'd love to see the ratio. That really would be a staggering number. One-sided number. Usually heavyweights throw around 55, 60 punches around the most to calm, and we haven't been counting. Throwing a lot more than 55, 60 around. In this close quarters fighting here that Maldonado has elected to take this route throughout this entire fight. Maybe does Maldonado try to fight from the perimeter here? I mean, what else does he have to lose? Other than his teeth. <laughs> Skin. <laughs> Nothing on that left hand of Maldonado. Oh, you know, you get to the point where if you are Carlos Takam and you're trying to show the heavyweight division that you deserve a title shot, you got to end it at yeah, some absolutely. point. you got to make and people bang. say, oh, my so God. So this is what Takam has been doing in this round. He did it three times. It's the hook. It's the shot to the body, followed up by the left hand, and it really is starting to pay dividends here. Get to calm just with that shoulder dip, it's almost inviting subconsciously Maldonado to come on in. Bang, bang. 45 seconds remaining 
round number eight. Watch the uh, the high-low attack, the body shot, and then the shot to the head. Maybe we'll see more of it if we get to a ninth round. See, just pounding, trying to pound. A couple shots went a little bit low by Maldonado, but he's got nothing on that left hand, nothing. Not sure I'd want to get hit with the left hand, but for <laughs> Carlos Sacomp, it looks like it really looks like Maldonado was throwing spitballs at a battleship. Yeah, it's more bothersome than anything else. Oh. No, no, no. Okay. Is that an exhausted man right there? Uh, Maldonado will make it out of this round. Maybe not. Uh, I like that. I like the safety of the fighters. They're trying to see if the pupils are dilated, trying to see if there is any evident damage from all these heavy shots that uh, Fabio Maldonado has been taking. Pat Sullivan has been around. He knows a beatdown when he sees one. Mm -hmm. and, he, he, and the commission, he's, he's looked over to the commission a few times. They're just not going to let this. If this is another round like we've been watching then that's throughout, it. they it's are going to stop it. the yeah, fight. Yeah, and why shouldn't you? I mean, we, we love the sport. Right. We love our fighters. But you can see referee very close there, very close. But I will say, Maldonado is keeping his hands kind of moving. A couple just, of more of these, and this one's over. You know, let's say, and I've got this a runaway. I've given yeah. every round to Carlos to Tom. I think you have too. Several rounds I've given a 10-8. Yep. I think Pat Sullivan getting ready now. But let's say it was an even fight. Okay. Do you let it go on? Yes. But let's say the, the rounds that Maldonado won were close, the rounds that to Tom one-sided like this. This is a one-sided round. Yeah, exactly. It's a one-sided fight. That's the thing, if I had seen anything from Maldonado at all, if I had seen his nine and 10 nine rounds, if, if they were effective and present, then I'd say by all means, keep this going. If you're watching this on Fight.TV, do you stop the fight? I could hear some of you say, no, Maldonado could come up with that shot, right? I, I understand that, and he's got a nice right hand. He has been landing it sometimes. Oh. I say All you right. end the fight. And look at that. Look at that. And that in and of itself may be the only reason that the referee isn't stepping in, unless that's for all my psychology well, majors out there. It's Maldonado's way of saying, please, someone stop this. Please, someone stop this. As these two bang on the inside, Takam tries to get some distance there. And once he did that, Maldonado did land. If Maldonado can come up with something on the perimeter, maybe, just maybe, there's an opportunity. Fabio Maldonado has not shown us most inability or punching power oh, tonight. He has shown us cojones. Yes, he has. There's something to be said. Anyone that laces up gloves has to have the intestinal fortitude. I'm going to come up with my own, at the end of the year, the Fabio Maldonado Courage Award. There you go. That's one of the first times that he's grabbing. Oh. Takes a knee. Is that out of exhaustion? Now, if the referee was going to stop it, that would have been the time. Ten seconds to go. Ooh. We are going to make it to a twelfth and a tenth and final round. I cannot believe it. Wow. I applaud the effort of Fabio Maldonado. Look on file cards <laughs> and a typewriter. Oh my gosh. Here we go. It's round number ten. Man, I would have bet anything this wouldn't have seen Absolutely. round four 100 percent, i agree i would have taken that action as well but you know something folks that's never that's why we don't bet <laughs> and never question the heart of anyone man woman or child even that chooses to compete you know if i'm the pr team of carlos to come yep. after this fight which he will win you say well i wanted to work I wanted to go 10 rounds, and Absolutely. I did my best to try to get the 10 rounds of work. Because you could sell that. Absolutely, I agree. But quite frankly, this fight never should have seen 10 rounds. No, not at all. 
And I, I love your point about spinning it. I mean, remember the world from which I come, pro wrestling, you got to spin everything here. But you do make a good point, and perhaps, look, we don't know, perhaps that was Takam's plan. At some point in the third or fourth round, his corner leaned in and said, listen, don't get hurt, but get the work in. But you never know in the sport. And, and I oh. mean, with Deontay Wilder last week, they said, why did he stop the fight? We have the punching power. We could have won. How do you know he was going to land it? Maybe he was going to take one shot too many. Good point. Maldonado has shown us so much courage. I, I am like a big Fabio Maldonado fan now. And it's nice about this and really any other sport, when you can try to find a way to, to juxtapose the narrative, to look at it from the other side and say, man, oh man, that team or that guy or, or that player lost, but what did I learn about them in the process? That's why I love boxing. Oh my gosh, and that's also why I love boxing. Maldonado just eats a stiff jab yeah, that rocked and comes him back. Forward. And look, he's talking to Takam. Push jab there by Takam. Maldonado has, has come across three quarters of the ring after that hard shot. And that punch was just a blind shot there. And here comes Takam. Right hand and then three stiff jabs. Oh, the right is hand. that it? Is that it? Man, oh man. What is keeping him up? Referee Pat Sullivan, one hard punch away. Yes. He's got to be ready to stop this fight. Absolutely. To calm the low hanging left, stalking with the right, brings the left hand. There's the over the top right, but an overhand right from Maldonado lands. And the fans of not stopping the fight say that's why you don't stop a fight. Yeah. But that's all he's got. There's nothing more than that. Heavyweight contender Carlos Tecom will win his next fight. Got the rounds in, but boy, did he have to work. And there you go. It is over. Carlos Tecom should be giving him a big hug, saying, man, I have never seen heart like yours. We know who won. Carl Ladies and gentlemen, gonna make it we official. have a unanimous decision. Judge Pei Little scored the bout 100 to 90, and Judge McKay and Varela both scored the bout 100 to 89. For your winner from Henderson, Nevada, Carlos Taco! No question there. Unanimous decision.